What is up, nerdy gamers everywhere? Welcome back to uh, General Game Gabbing, the series where I have a friend and we talk about, you know, a question relating to video games. Whether it be uh, the possibilities of the different game mechanics actually being realistic or if something is accurate or not. Uh, it all depends. Anyways, I'm Rick Quasar and joining us today is uh, Chris. And Chris, why don't you tell us uh, your uh, credentials? My credentials? Yeah. I have a Bachelor of Science degree from University of Maryland, Baltimore County. A little plug in there. Uh, in physics, and I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for 21 years. Nice. High school physics. I, I, I almost want to ask you, like, what is your opinion on, like, teaching science? Like... Well, I wouldn't rather be teaching anything else. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Especially in physics, it's 90% uh, of the stuff we talk about is everyday everyday stuff, mm -hmm. stuff we, uh, interact, how we interact with the universe. So. Cool. Well, today we're, actually, we're going to be talking about a little bit more things you may not find commonly. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, the very many tools, weapons, gizmos, doodobs, and doohickeys, and all that jazz from video games. Um, we have, there are a lot of different tools you come across in video games that help you aid you in a quest, or maybe a monster is, or a bad guy is using it against you, or whatever. There's all these different wildly fantastic machines that you guys come across whenever we play yeah. video games. And, um... A little bit on the crazier side, uh, but we're going to be ta discussing today if any of these different tools or weapons are actually possible. If they're in the realm of, like, today's modern time, is it possible to have something like this actually made? Mm -hmm. So today, so right now, we're going to start off with the ever-popular uh, ray gun. Um, now, tip, now this is this one design is based off of uh, a Call of Duty game, um, Call of Duty Black Ops. Actually, you can't you find this whenever you're playing um, in one of the zombies mode. But a ray gun has been in many different video games from in many different ways. Your typical ray gun shoots a laser, can either like you know go through walls or stop by walls. Is it? Does it have a piercing capability? Whatever. A typical gun that shoots lasers. What does that look like? Is it actually possible? I actually had several of these back in the 80s. They're real. And you'd, you'd pull the trigger and they'd make this awesome noise. Except the ray was always imagined. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, going <laughs> that, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> that, that's, that's why, you know, we're, we're not allowed to do that in school anymore. But uh, Yes. <laughs> but uh, as far as ray gun, you, you got to really look at uh, what... What's coming out? If it's if it's like ray, like laser ray, mm -hmm. um, then what you're looking at there is basically using light to blast your blast a hole through something. It's just a, a, a light ray. Um, and so uh, possibility, we're making lasers to shoot down missiles. Yeah. Um, so if we're talking about like a laser ray gun. Um, your main issue there is is compacting the whole mechanism into a handheld unit and putting power to it. Yeah. So think about uh, just a handheld laser pointer. Uh, you look at that, the, the power on that, it's in the milliwatt range, sometimes like 0.5 milliwatts. And uh, what that's tell, telling us is that it's just a very small amount of energy. Um, p power is the rate at which energy is output. So. Uh, if you take a normal light bulb that lights up a room, um, you might get like a 14 watt LED light bulb. So that means, you know, somewhere between 10 to 14 watts of, of light, depending on its efficiency, is spreading out in all directions. So okay. what, what a laser does is it, it sends all that energy into one direction. And that's why such a, a small milliwatt laser can can blind you, is damaging to your, to your eyes. Because if you are just looking at a, a light from the ceiling, mm -hmm. you're only getting a very small amount of that total power. Gotcha. So yeah, just to be able to focus that in a ray gun uh, takes a little technical know-how mm -hmm. and some power. So I'd say yeah, a, a laser ray gun is, say, I've seen, is I've probably within the realm of possibility. I've seen like a a ray gun, but it's like like 
the size of a TV or something like that. Like not something you could really carry. Like maybe you need like five different guys to carry this. But I've seen like a quote quote a like thing that shoots a laser, but it's like takes up your whole room type of deal mm -hmm. like something like that i don't actually don't know what the term of it is called but i have seen things like that is so would it be possible to get that a little bit smaller i'd say like try i mean the, the fact that we have lasers and weapon systems that behave like that already i'd say yeah it's a total possibility mm. just uh just need to make it small enough, put it in a small enough package. All right, cool. So we'll, we'll give it like a, a maybe. Yeah. Like maybe a couple more years or, well, yeah. or something like that. Now, now, the other kind of ray I was thinking of is it like a disintegration ray. Like, So that one... So the, Is that a different one? The picture... There are, there are always going to be different ones. Um, bleh. So in one game, uh, Star Wars Jedi Knight, you had a disintegration rifle where you hit someone and they would disintegrate but that's not the pew pew that's blaster. not the pew pew like okay. this one this one specifically um this one is really weird it didn't pierce like if it hits a solid object it's mm -hmm. stopping and in fact what it does is whenever you shoot it at the ground or at a wall it actually kind of gives like a little bit of an explosion effect right okay not enough like oh throw a grenade boom like more of like oh i felt that type of deal so it's kind of like heating up the object yeah okay. basically yeah. That'd be more like a laser type of. Laser. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now, do you see like? Do you see like? Can, can you can you tr track it across? Uh, you know what? The um, we're gonna through the air. I'm gonna come right back to you guys. I'm gonna show you a video. Okay. So you, you kind of see like these little rings almost, and then you see when it hits ah, a zombie, it like causes ring like ray. a little. Yeah. So that's all you see is those little rings, but otherwise you really don't see anything else. So that's more of the. Uh, oh, okay. So. You might say those rings could be an atmospheric condition as the energy tra travels through the air. And a lot, a lot of lasers, um, people don't think about it too much, but a lot of lasers are, lasers are infrared, which means we can't actually see them. But mm -hmm. they are, they would heat up the matter in the uh, surrounding area. And uh, increasing the, the pressure, air pressure in a local area sometimes does create little clouds. So you, if, if the creators of that game are trying to trying to say that the, these little rings are being uh, are effective that the blaster itself like you know in star wars the the, the stun gun that, that stuns princess like oh yeah yeah we have the, yeah. They have the like that ring. The little ring thing you know um if that's what they're trying to create there um i'm not sure that how that would be made there's there's nothing that i can think of that would have that mm -hmm. create that effect but if, if they're actually talking about hey there's energy passing this area and we're going to or say that there's something happened to the atmosphere around it to make those rings. That, that's pretty possible. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look at a an aircraft um, breaking the sound barrier, you actually do see almost a, a, a ring effect around the aircraft from where mm -hmm. the 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 shock wave is. I should say. I mean, shock wave is is just sound. Yeah. How it compresses the air and uh, creates this kind of effect. So you do see the, this ring of cloud around the aircraft when it's breaking that sound barrier. So cool. If they're if they're doing something with the the energy of traveling through the air, you know that's, that's I would say artistic. It, it almost looks like it's just a bullet moving, like a, like some type of like incendiary round that is like when it like when it hits someone, it like does that little explosion, okay. and that's like just the smoke. It's just cause it's just moving at a super intense speed. Okay. Like I'm not that that that's why I was saying this one's a little bit iffy because the ray gun from Call of Duty is just it's not a beam, mm -hmm. right? You actually kind of like a mass driver. Just kind yeah, of like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you actually can upgrade some of the guns and went in like a special machine. And when you do, they actually fire like Star Wars beam, mm -hmm. like that, like the like little bit of la the laser thing. You mm -hmm. get that effect. This one isn't that, not really. So, like I said, a little bit, a little bit iffy. But um, so it upgrades kind of like in Star Fox when you get your lasers turning into those little ball. Things. Yeah, yeah, Just kind, kind of. Just weapon around. Yeah, kind yeah. of. All right, that's good. We'll move on though okay. because I don't want to get stuck on one as, as interesting as it is. We're gonna stay with Call of Duty though and move on. This is probably my favorite weapon from the Zombies game. It is name is the uh, Wonder Wave. So this lovely little. Um, it kind of looks like someone took like an old-fashioned radio and just put a bunch of prawns on it and whatnot. So what the Wonder Wave does? Is it is it for like? 
doctors when someone comes in and they're constipated you just tell them to turn over and no no oh, okay. no <laughs> no well the one way you know what <laughs> no water wave what it does actually is uh you shoot you would shoot a zombie and then from that zombie it would create an electrical arc that would bounce to any nearby zombies but only zombies but it, well no no no, no. yeah no splash damage on your on your co-op mode players um if you i think if you walk into it while the arcs are being created i think it does damage you okay. and I, I i was i was productive and i are and i already pulled up but since you're completely alive and not undead it doesn't it doesn't uh just <laughs> shoot a zombie shoot a zombie from the zombie that gets shot it creates arcs to hit the other guys nice yeah so Right off the bat, I'm like, I don't know any type of engineering at all. All I'm thinking of is that it's just some type of Tesla coil. But the fact that, and I figured, okay, creates an electrical arc, hits the person, and then it would jump to the other people. But the fact that you're shooting something, and then from the person you're shooting at, spreads out. Not shooting, not the gun itself connecting and then spraying out. It's from the person that you're being, that you're shooting at. That just doesn't sound right in my mind. So the, I think this electrical weapons I think are completely overdone. I, I think they're completely fun. Like I never try to work them out in my brain. Mm -hmm. But uh, electricity happens from atom to atom or f through fields. Okay. So to you, you got to think about the motivation. Of an electron. So if we're actually talking about electricity here and not some other kind of made up energy um, going into these into these zombies, uh, you, you gotta think about what that electron is trying to do. It's somehow being projected through you know from the point of the weapon okay. to the zombie. But why is it doing that? That's what you gotta ask. Like why would it be doing that? Um, for example, uh, if I'm standing in the middle of a field during the thunderstorm, um, why might a bolt of lightning hit me instead of something else? Grounded? I'm grounded. Yeah. The electrons originally were swept up in some kind of way from the ground, probably from you know the moving air, the storm. There's a lot of debris in the air. And generally from that churning, it's kind of like friction. If you ever rubbed a balloon on, on, on your shirt, you're picking mm -hmm. up electrons. So somehow you're getting some kind of uh, electro, uh, electrical separation of, of charge, positive and negative charges, in the cloud. Now when that cloud, let's say it's negatively charged along the bottom, is near the Earth, through um, electrical induction, which is when you bring like an electron close to another electron, they're going to separate. They're going to want to push away. Okay. Um, so if, they, if an electron pushes other, other away, what's going to leave behind? It's the proton. So here you kind of have to, I'm getting real sciencey on here, right here, but uh, I'm, I have a point to all this. Um, the atom, you've got protons and electrons. And if you take away a proton, sorry, if you take away the electron, you leave a proton behind. Yes. Okay. So uh, get back to the cloud. You've got a negatively charged cloud. It's going to push electrons on the surface of the earth further away, leaving a bunch of positive protons behind. And that creates this electrical field. That's the force that's going to be put on electrons to move through the air. Now, air is not a conductor. Mm -hmm. It's an insulator. So in order to send electrons through it, you have to put a strong enough electric field on, that, on the air molecules in order to turn it into a conductor. It's called a dielectric breakdown. Okay. Neat little name there. So what's going to happen here is we need to somehow, th this gun has to probably push electrons away first to attract to these zombies and somehow go to the zombies and not you and not the ground. And so, like, is the likelihood of this weapon being a real thing? Yeah. Probably not. Especially, like, if it jumps to one and jumps to another. Unless, uh, you know, th there's some awesome way that Maybe electrons kind of build up in one, which uh, 
only affect the zombies around it. Maybe there's some electrical properties of zombies we don't know about. So uh, not not uh, <laughs> not trying to totally. Yeah, no, no, no. I get it because knock on it, but the zombies themselves, there's like you know some weird power, or whatever. The, the whole lore of the game, you have to like actually like you have to like go through. Someone put together all the lore. It's very like it doesn't make sense. So, but basically it's like, oh, the zombies are powered by some sort of energy. So maybe with that energy, they're more conductive in some way. I don't know. But yeah, but it, yeah, it doesn't make sense that it wouldn't, that it wouldn't, that it would hit the effect of zombie, but not you. And that, that's a hard thing. We, we you know, I, I love playing Zelda Breath of the Wild and whatever I'm wearing metal <laughs> armor or you know, metal weapons or shield, I'm more likely to get struck by lightning. Um, just because you're wearing a ring doesn't make you more electrically attractive. That's why I wear my rubber ring whenever I go outside. <laughs> In fact, if you're, if you're completely surrounded by a conductor, then it's impossible. Mm -hmm. um, it's called a Faraday cage. That's the safest place to be around electricity is inside of a metal cage. Cool. Now, if, it's a, if there's big holes or gaps in it, like, like a car is essentially a metal cage, but people have still been known to been electric, electrocuted in cars. I've seen it's not a completely enclosed yeah. kind of. Uh, I've seen system. I've seen a, a car actually get struck by lightning. It was the spookiest thing ever, right? Because it was a, it was off of a like a security camera. This car gets struck by lightning, and then there's like just a smoke in build up inside the car, oh. and then they had this get out, and the car is smoking. Uh, the person got out of the car was like it was walking but he was like, he just like he just doesn't know what to do so now within the car there are um the battery and everything are actually grounded to the the frame of the vehicle yeah so that it's going to affect engine electronics is going to totally fry the car yeah but uh hopefully the person will be okay like you said the person was walking this fine all i can think of in this and yeah. correct me if i'm wrong i don't think of rubber tires touching the ground so maybe that helped a little bit rubber does it creates that you know, higher dielectric break time makes it less likely it's going to get struck. Um, but just kind of go back to it, that like an aircraft, an airplane, mm -hmm. made mainly of metal is like a metal cage. Occupants of airplanes are often fine when lightning strikes the airplane. It's, you they, just don't want to mess with the engine and stuff like that. I was going to say, so. it probably, they probably more just have heart attacks as they yeah. see the bolt kind of go through. All right, so we're going to... So the likelihood of that weapon, nah. uh, if there's some... Uh, uh, weird electrical property to to these to the zombies maybe that that explains why um it doesn't affect other people mm -hmm. around or, or maybe it does or not yeah but i'd say more, more likely if you, you fire something like that it'll, it'll find the quickest path to the ground it's not going to just jump across so you're gonna you're gonna shoot this and gun a, and it's gonna go like this instead of like this yeah or uh yeah if there's a, a sink nearby metal pipes lead to the ground it's gonna go to that sink before it goes cool. to that, that cool yeah. all right good to know yeah. All right, well, we are skip jumping out of uh, Call of Duty and heading into... I... You guys can yell at me, whatever. I don't know where this weapon originated. I know it coming from Gary's mod. I don't know if it existed anywhere else. You can correct me if I'm wrong, whatever. Uh, but we're going to be looking at the gravity gun. Now, mm. the gravity gun, basically, as far as I know, because I don't know where it originally originated from, so you guys could do whatever, but the gravity gun, you would, you can cut, you can basically use it to pick up and lift items. Mm. And then you could actually like eject the, pull it in towards you and then like launch it away from you. And that's what the gravity gun does. You can use, you can like, oh, I'm going to grab this pool table. I'm going to throw it at someone. I'm going to take this, this chair. I'm going to launch it at someone. But the main thing of it is, is just being able to suspend something, like you're holding it mid-air, basically. What type of energy, force, whatever, would cause a weapon to actually be able to suspend something mid-air like that? Uh, well, possibly, is there, is there a gun like this that's a possibility? I'd say if there is, it, it may not work on gravity. So I'd say like, if, if you look up uh, this one uh, from Veritasium, uh, it's, it's creator, he talks, he talks about gravity. And um, how we experience it is in the Newtonian way, like mm -hmm. gravity is sort of like a force like a spring, 
like if you pull a spring, it tends to pull, pull back on you. Okay. So if I jump away from the ground, it tends to pull me back. It has that same kind of, in physics, we just call it a conservative force. That energy is not really lost. Um, when you, when you jump up, you come back down, um, mm. that type of thing, as opposed to friction, where if you slide along the ground, you don't slide back. Um, <laughs> it doesn't cause you to slide back. You just, Unless you're on a hill, you're sliding yeah. up a hill, then yeah. you slide back down. <laughs> yeah. Um, so gravity is, there's still a lot that's unknown about gravity. Uh, we can turn, we can tr convert um, ma like magnetic forces into electrical forces. Um, if you make an electromagnet, you can do that. Um, but there's no way to, that we know really to, to, to make anything create gravity in the way that this is doing it. So right now, that's, that's a... Um, probably an impossibility if, if it's working somehow on gravity. Now there's still a lot out there. Um, what exactly is a gravity wave? Mm -hmm. um, generally they're, they're not really generated by a gun. Um, but it's how, how gravity expresses itself over space and time. Um, if you just want to be blown away and just keep yourself wondering, um, the movie Interstellar tries to play around with that a little bit. Um, so put it into a gun to make it kind of like a tractor beam. Yeah. Um, whatever a tractor beam is. <laughs> uh, in space, it may be something that, you know, in the future that could be used to actually work like uh, in a junkyard, uh, a big old electromagnet comes down and picks up a, a car and moves it. Well, can we do that when, when there's no, when there's not uh, the presence of gravity like you're on a planet if you're just talking about spaceship to spaceship can we make the two attract to each other probably mm -hmm. maybe electrostatically you could um, but uh on the ground if you're changing gravity you know what if you're you're changing some gravitational or inertial aspect of the thing you're trying to move then that's going to affect everything around it mm -hmm. possibly including you um, so so let's say let's so here's a couple ideas of like mm -hmm. how a gun is like this gun is like powered right so would it be possible to have something have basically its own orbit, right? Because like all I'm thinking of is like this gun is like somehow fabricating the gravity of a planet and centralizing it in a point where it's pulling something and holding it in like an orbit, basically. Okay, so you're going to open up a wormhole to a place close to a planet yeah. more to... <laughs> yeah, well, basically, we're ba oh wait, I got the, wait until we get to the next next uh, tool. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> yeah, basically. We well, could so why would it only affect the thing you're pointing it at? I don't know. I don't have these degrees. And and if <laughs> if you're gonna lift it up like this, you'd have to disconnect it from kind of space and time in this little bubble. You'd have to reduce its inertia to zero. And what the heck is inertia? It's just that an object's tendency to, to stay where it is or to keep moving in the, in the reference frame it's in. And that's just based on how much mass it's got, yeah. how much stuff that makes it up. So what would that even look like? So uh, too many, too many, too many. It, it's a great thing for a video game. It's a yeah. tool, you know? This is all great things for it's a video like, game. You know, I mentioned um, Zelda, it's like Magnesis. Um, uh, we're actually going to get to that later. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. All right. So maybe not in the realms. And I, I'm, I feel a little upset because this next weapon, uh, tool, this next tool has that capability mm -hmm. as well as the main thing. It has that capability where you can use it to grab and move items. Uh, but this is the ever popular uh, portal gun from the Portal series. And exactly how it sounds. Uh, you would point it in the game. It's a puzzle game, so um, it had to give it a bit of a gimmick. In the game itself, you have to shoot. You shoot the gun, and it creates these portals on white surfaces, only white surfaces. But many different people have modified it. Um, I think even maybe in the game they talked about it, where it's just any flat surface. You shoot on a flat surface, little little uh, hole opens up. Then you shoot on a separate surface and then that hole connects to that hole. So you have two different ones that are connected to each other, and then you, you, know, you can go through it and pop out the other hole. And uh, yeah, in the game, I think they actually mentioned about, oh, they use like all these different things. So like in Free, free Guy? 
Yeah, that's okay. actually where it's from. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a, this is a really popular game. Um, mm. Actually, uh, Gary's mod, the Gravity Gun, and the Portal Gun. You can see the kind of the similarities between the two. They are from again. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're from the same universe. Uh, Valve. Valve, who's made uh, a, a Half Life, uh, Left for Dead, the Portal series, mm -hmm. all these, all great, fantastic games. Um, there's a big joke, however, that they can't count to three because they made Half Life One, fantastic, epic game. Half Life Two, even better. It's been years. We haven't seen a Half Life Three. Then they make Left for Dead. Great zombie cooperative game. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2, even better. Now you can actually play as a zombie. Yeah, I think you can play as a zombies before, but there's more that you can play as, mm -hmm. as you can go up against. No Left 4 Dead 3. Fight Me, Back for Blood is not the same. It's not. Anyways, they made a, they made a game. They say, oh, it's basically the same thing. It's not. It's, it's not. It, doesn't, it can't live up to potential. There's been a lot of big arguments about. Anyways, and then Portal. Portal 1. I actually just recently played Portal 1 for my channel. Really nice puzzle game. I love puzzle games because it makes you think you can do all these different things. Um, and, and then Portal, you do Portal 1, then Portal 2, which was two very fantastic puzzle games. No Portal 3. They've... Oh, wait, I take that back. I take that back. It was a game based off of the factory that you're working in your ba the, the game takes place in like this um this lab where you test um test the portal gun that's your job um you actually try to escape you escape the lab because the the main robot ai thing is like just obsessed with testing is getting you to test the gun over and over again um but what up what ends up happening is you end up escaping but there's a main lab and they did come out with a game based off of where you're testing different products in the lab. But I think it's only like half an hour long. It's not a long game at all. It's a free to play. Um, but anyways, what are we looking at? What is this? What would? How would you create? Basically, we're talking about wormholes. Wormholes that are connect, connected to each other. That's not a black hole destroying the world. How would you connect them? Is it possible? Is the it? portal gun? Yeah. Um, so when the, when the portals appear, are they, do they appear as like flat disks that you can just kind of pass through? You have, it has to be on a surface. Uh -huh. White so, surface. Yeah, I had, or uh, not the white surface, just a flat surface. Okay. Um, like my lovely yellow walls? They'd work. Yes. Okay. And that's really funny. You, so, by the way, it's Lothlorien gold is what we were going for. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Okay, yeah. Um, so let's see, uh, portal portals. So you would create a portal and then when you cancel them out, like shut them off, they, there's no marks, there's no nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if you watch it, even like, it kind of like folds. So when you shoot, it, shoot at the wall, it folds into the portal, right? A little bit on the white surface. In. It kind of like yeah. dips into it. And that's actually, it's creating a mirror effect because you can look through the portal and you're seeing out, you're, you're looking into here mm -hmm. and you're seeing out of, oh, darn you. Okay. And you're seeing out of it. Actually, in the game, you're look, so you're looking into this portal on the left and mm -hmm. you're seeing out of it so you can see your person. Okay. And don't even get me started with this whole tunnel effect that you can end up doing um actually what, put one on behind you yeah yeah what you have to do with one of the puzzles you put a portal above you and then okay. a portal below you to pick up speed so you can launch yourself it's it's good it's a, it's a really great game i i get like a bit of an adrenaline rush thrill playing it be, when you're doing stuff like that because portal 2 coming soon be patient i will be playing it soon um you have a bunch of you have a couple like chase scenes and whatnot where you're trying to escape escape like a, a death trap and you have to like you know set up all the different portals to get through. It's a really cool puzzle game. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, they like I said, they vaguely touch upon how they made this, but not enough to like where it fully explains how it works. Okay, uh, first thing I want to say it's uh, Rivendell Yellow Gold. Oh, okay, uh, you had Lothorn. to yeah, the yeah. thing. But anyway, um, if we're talking about like wormholes, 
um, do they really need a surface? Uh, I, I guess with a gun, you need to hit something to interact with matter to, mm -hmm. to do something or other. So I, I suppose if the if the ray if if the portal gun needs to interact with dense matter like a solid, um, you ever wonder why why does it have to hit a wall? Why can't it just hit air and just kind of pops up mm -hmm. out of nowhere? Yeah. Why does it hit like five feet away and then phew, goes up? So yeah. So I guess if it has to hit a something dense like a wall to have enough matter to to make this portal happen, I'm trying to think it through here, um, would it then actually be a disc that you're pouring into? Uh, if you want to see a possible representation of a black hole that, if they do exist, which they haven't been confirmed yet, really, re really, wow. yeah, there, there's there's a couple of uh, kind of catch twenty twos with. Because let me tell you, it's there's nothing scarier thinking that they're out with, there with wormholes. Uh, there's nothing scarier than thinking that out there in space is this thing that is just. Do they grow? Do Gr they, wormholes growing? Yeah, yeah. Like, do black holes slash wormholes? Do they? Oh, black holes. Well, well black to, holes. To become a black hole, it's, it has it's, to grow. it's matter it grows. that grows. Yeah. That, that there's some hole yeah. out in space, constantly growing, sucking up well, things. Kind of like by growing, it could actually be. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. This is why they. This is why they're saying yeah. they're unconfirmed yet. Well, black holes are definitely you know something that we call black holes definitely those, those are confirmed but wormholes a oh, worm holes. wormholes okay those are different they're connected to spot two places in space okay yeah. that's the difference that's the all right all right sorry continue so uh for a wormhole a wormhole is most likely more like a, a ball in space like a sphere mm -hmm. and uh how you can think of it is, is um one of these other awesome YouTube channels. I don't want to say Veritasium again because I do watch a lot. Watch that one, but this one might have been on that one. I think it was that one. I'll get I'll get the links. We'll put yeah. it below. You got you guys. I'll, go I'll try check to them find out. them for you guys too. Yeah, but this is a good one. Like, what would a wormhole look like, or what would a connection like that look like? Um, Not so, a flat disk. So if if we lived in a two dimensional world, try to sum it up here on a piece of paper. Yeah. Then a wormhole would be like if you folded that paper and pushed a, a pencil through it, and then you look at it, you would see a disc mm -hmm. connecting one point to the other, and folding it together, you could walk right through, okay. disc into disc. But we're in this three-dimensional world, so what would that look like? So then if you go, well, what if, uh, what if you drop a three-dimensional object through a two-dimensional space, like a ball? Yeah. What would you see in the two-dimensional space? We'd see a, a point as the, as the bottom of the ball hit that paper, and as it passed through, you'd see that point increase into a size of a, a larger and larger disc, and then it would decrease again to nothing. So you'd see like the, the bottom of that ball, which is a little point, and the diameter grows when it gets to the middle and then shrinks again back to nothing. What would this so, do to the human body? So if we're talking about like... <laughs> Oh, I'm not even talk about that. <laughs> like, we're so, talking. Would a worm wormhole be a disc, or would it be more of a sphere? Okay. And so, uh, so you're thinking more like diving into this this space, and so you're thinking like if shooting oh. this gun, it would be like a bubble, basically, of of this. Yeah, and more, thing. more like, if it's reflecting anything, or I guess it wouldn't be reflecting. It would be. You'd be looking into it. I don't even know how the light would be skewed through this thing. Would it mm -hmm. be kind of like, kind of yeah, out, sort of like a saying. lensing effect? Um, I don't think it would look exactly how it does, um, like in that mm -hmm. video game or, or in Free Guy, when you had the, the guys. I forgot. Through. They what was that? Don't... I think X Men have a have an ability to do that. If this was actual thing, would someone survive going through it? Well. Um, I'd say if our bodies exist in the space time we're always in, whether that that area is like growing mm -hmm. from one perspective or shrinking, uh, then all of our atoms or cells, I suppose, would shrink or grow with it. Be but, like uh, stretching us like a, putty. Since a wormhole hasn't even been confirmed as a real thing, uh, it's hard to. It's hard to imagine how that would actually work because okay, yeah, it'd All be right. kind of like trying to build a building without understanding weight, like uh, how, how heavy things are. I so. get that. 
Well, it's fun to fantasize about it, and it really is a is a fun little game, and I'm looking. I look forward to uh, replaying it. But I mean, right. everything you've mentioned, uh, that's probably the furthest from the fur really possibility. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. I like it. Well, we're jumping out of the world of Valve, okay. and now we're going into the world of Legend of Zelda. You mentioned Breath okay. of the Wild. We're going to be talking about some of the Breath of the Wild things, uh, mainly just the Sheikha slate that you have. Um, Is that I, how you pronounce it? I don't know. I do not know. For the longest time... The uh, Shakalaka slate. The Shakalaka. <laughs> Shakalaka. Yeah, no. I don't know. Because like, there's a lot of first Legend of Zelda game where they actually have you know voices... So when you hear people say the things, and, and it's like, oh, okay, that's how you pronounce it? That's how you say that? Yes, it was, it was very weird. But yeah, we're going to... Give me 50 bundles of wood. Yeah, basically. Okay, go. <laughs> um, so you have the... We're going to skip over the stasis one. Because mm -hmm. the one that you freeze in time, you build up, you build up with the uh, oh, what? Power. That's the most realistic. Yeah, no, we're gonna kidding. we're gonna <laughs> jump over that. We're gonna, you know we're gonna start with the mag the magnesis one, oh, yeah, yeah. the where you yeah where you uh, connect. You basically just have a giant magnet and you're using it to control a metal object. I feel like this isn't impossible. Because we basically see that in, like, you mentioned in Junkyard. We see that in a Junkyard, but it's always moving. It's being connected to the magnet. You're not using it to, like, push it away further or pull it or whatever. So one thing, um, the reason why it's called a law is because there's no evidence that anything has ever acted to the contrary. Newton's third law. This is the one we always need to remember. Um... There's that action-reaction pair. Mm -hmm. So if I pull on a two-ton metal box, then it's going to pull me back at the same time. That's often why we can't move it. Let me try to pull it this way. All right, I'm pulling with, you know, 100 pounds of force this way, but there's a lot of friction under there. So it's yeah. also pulling with 100 pounds of force the other way. I don't move it. Um, it's... Also, that reason why, uh, if you look at watch, ever watch the MythBusters episode on on, on, on getting shot, well, of course you're, you're playing video games, so you're not watching a lot of TV. So. Yeah, that is fair. <laughs> that is extremely fair, actually. So in the movies, uh, like the old western, someone gets shot. They they do an episode with us. Um, mm -hmm. Does the guy actually going to get pushed back through the window? And that's probably more if if anything ever like that ever happened, it would be more like a reaction, like you're trying to get away from it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if the, the Newton's third law would essentially be this, if someone gets pushed back with that force, that means whoever shot the bullet would also get pushed back with that amount of force. There's a bit of a, of a kickback, but it's not enough. It's not going to throw like, you through oh! the window. Right? Yeah. Um, I guess you could say in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, the awesome you know short crewman who had that little mini cannon, and you know th that that would be an example. Of what would what would be happening? Yeah. I feel like I, 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 now that I feel like that's different because blunderbusses and muskets are just in a realm of their own because it's called a blunderbuss. The one that he used, I think it's called a blunderbuss. Skills right there. Yeah, I think it's called a blunderbuss. I, you know, you, you take first of all, the sucker takes like ten minutes to load. Not actually, it's a lot. Yeah, you pour the powder in. You put the you put the you put the the explode. You put the uh, like a little package basically. You put the musket ball in. A little more powder. I want then to see them incorporate that into one of these games. Yeah, <laughs> or is it actually no, to reload these weapons? They <laughs> did. There is a game. Um, I just saw Markiplier, another YouTuber, play it. Um, and it takes a solid two minutes for you to reload this gun. Is it like one of those old NES controller combinations, A, B, A, B, select, start? It <laughs> no, no, but that would be funny. But like, yeah, you got you got everything. You got to, you got to take the little plunger. You got to oh, stick it down there. It's a process. So watching him get thrown back with this, you know, size of a, like a, of like a little, like of, um, I'm trying to think of something to use. All I think of is like as a as a log, like a, like a medium sized log. I feel like that's enough of a force to poof because it's just um, basically yeah. a gun is a mini explosion. But with watching like how big 
of an opening that gun was maybe maybe it's like you have like a smaller like a snow like a baseball size uh cannonball musket firing thing the amount of explosion that you would need to get to actually launch i mean maybe but sorry i digress <laughs> but to get back to this uh, yeah. i was going with newton's third law like to lift that up there's going to be an upward force that means mm -hmm. there has to has to has to be that object that object is pushing down on something yeah so it's either the through the magnesis of that object that force would have to be pushing down through link or it should be affecting somehow it, maybe it's creating some field with the ground mm -hmm. um something underneath of it so is it like separating electrons it's going to affect the, the ground to create a, a hovering effect and, yeah, yeah so um, my dad my dad mm -hmm. um i was watching an x-men movie and my dad, and you know, you Magneto, he comes up, does a little thing, he's flying. Yes. So I'm looking at it, I'm like, so is he just manipulating the metal around him, causing him flying? But oh no, my, no, my dad's like, oh no, he, he's just manipulating the magnetic field around himself, causing him to fly. <laughs> I think he's got metal boots. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, it's got to be metal boots. But, no, no, wait. See, it, it might, might be his belt. It might be his belt. See, that's what I said. Because in the one the scene, I think it's in better. the second X Men movie, yeah. the older ones, he 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 uses a metal disc to escape from a prison because it takes one of the yes. things and he stretches out and you and steps on the disc. I'm like, if that's the case, why wouldn't if like if you can affect if he could affect the magnetic field, why wouldn't he just be able to just you know, fly without having to use that. Uh, anyways, no, yeah. We're getting into movies, but if you do apply some... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Use, use any example. Yeah. Try to talk about if this is possible. But that, that, that's probably another, another good... Um, like, if we go to the, look, look at the X-Men movies, I have something to say about Quicksilver, too. <laughs> and all the people he might be moving around, he should be, like... They should be destroying dead. Destroying completely they should be whenever dead. he does it, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's actually so funny <laughs> enough... Um, I played uh, a Dungeons & Dragons type game with my father for the longest time, and he would make sure that we specify, I am moving, if someone who has super speed, I am moving this person carefully so that you were not raising your grabbing your arm, speeding away. All of a sudden, you, you're, you're now missing your arm. With maximum tolerable <laughs> acceleration. Yes. <laughs> you're now missing your arm. Maybe we pulled out some of your, some of your body with it. Yeah, it's, it's... I like how they try to get around with, oh, I'm going to hold them, brace them behind the head. I know. And they're just like, oh, afterwards. I, I know. I don't know. I don't know. In, in collisions, it's actually acceleration that kills you, deceleration that kills... Or, or injures or maims. Mm. It's not necessarily the object. It's, it's your mass continuing to move forward when you actually wanted to stop. So yeah, yep. awesome. So magnetic magnetic gun or magnesis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How exactly would you affect like a magnetic field around something, or is that even a thing? Um. So magnetic fields can be. 100% created and manipulated with coils of wire or just mm -hmm. motion of, of charge or even just changing electric fields. And it uh, happens all the time in the things we, we plug in. If you ever used a power ad adapter, that actually uses magnetism in order to convert the wall AC current into direct current. Mm -hmm. uh, there's transformers outside that... Uh, you know, see sometimes buzzing, and they're up on p power lines, and they're sometimes in boxes and, on know, the ground. A stray squirrel and sometimes, or, uh, or something. Yeah, sometimes. Just hits it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes something <laughs> hits it, or, or wires nearby, and it just sparks and blows up, and you hear boom, and yeah. your power goes out. Good times. All those uh, use that conversion from electrical to magnetic uh, fields all the time. So, so, with this thing, is Link just <laughs> electrifying the box, or? The, that's what I'm guessing what would, would have to happen here, but there there might there has to have an inter, there has to be an interaction between that box and something in the environment around it, and there doesn't really seem to be at all. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm playing the game, the controller doesn't wait. I'm playing. The, mm -hmm. <laughs> does does his, his Sheikah slate? Um, How do you say it? Sheikah slate. Sheikah slate. Sheikah slate. Yeah. Sheikah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Does, I'll look, does, it, does, I'll does look it, it up. I mean, I don't, I don't see any any change there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, I don't know. It, you know, it's Hyrule. It's Hyrule. There's a lot of weird things. You got the weird, yeah. you got the fish You got the people. flying pig got... around the castle with oh, purple yeah. lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clamity Does Ganon. anyone know why exactly those things came out of the ground around the I, castle? But don't... it creates some sort of awesome I don't purple. know. I don't know. That I love g- that game, though. I, I really do. I like it, too. Um, I'm looking out for number two. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just a lot of fun stuff. A lot of people are really upset about that game. I was like, it doesn't feel like a Legend of Zelda game. And I understand that. I understand the whole the breaking it's weapon. what I always wanted. How many times in any game before it have you been like, to get over there, I just need to go over that stupid rock. And it won't let yeah, me. Yeah, no. It yeah, won't let me. Yeah, I know. I, I, it like completely freed you to mm-hmm. go, finally. I know. I agree. I like it. Coming. I like it. Uh, but the next next uh, item, staying with Breath of the Wild, is uh, the cryo, cryo, cryonesis, cryo, cryonosis, whatever this thing is called. Um, it's that word that people only see cryo and they, they don't remember the rest of it. Yeah, yeah basically. Like, yeah. yeah. Whatever the cryo it's, it's the thing. cryo one. Cryo. It's the cryo one. It's the one yeah. that causes, you know, the pillars of frozen, uh, of ice to rise up from water. Um, and so I, th- this I put in the category, I don't know if anyone's coined it before, of magio science. You know, they're trying to, you need water. Mm-hmm. And to freeze to, mm-hmm. to to make that you know physical change happen, but it has this stamp of magic, shieka magic, on yeah. It. And uh, it it comes out sideways in a perfect cube. Um, you just need a little puddle. Mm-hmm. You only need like this much water, and <laughs> this big yeah. old thing comes up. You're like okay, you it, get it draws it draws the moisture out of the air, <laughs> and somehow it's completely climbable. <laughs> that. I can't climb that up. That does bug I me. I can't climb up the uh, the strange things coming out of the ground around the castle. But you can climb up. But the, I can climb up ice, ice cubes. Um, you, I'm completely good good with it because it is a great puzzle tool. Yeah. Like, no. And that's and that's mo- the majority. Oh, wait, of these, there's water there. I yeah. Can cry the majority of the time is is these are just great tools in the game. It's like maybe out in the real world. All right. Let's start with this. Is what I'm thinking with. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. When you freeze water, it expands. A little bit. A little bit? A little bit. So not that much, obviously. It goes from like this to this in this nice solid mm-hmm. pattern. So, yeah, well, because it's a polar molecule, it's positive negative charges. Mm-hmm. Um, when, you, when they're fluid, they can just uh, get near each other and they just kind of spin and they can kind of move around each other. But when they're frozen in, in space, when, yeah. as they freeze, they're slowing down so they, they more align together and they they form those wonderful patterns like snowflakes and such like mm-hmm. that. Um, so yeah. Okay, okay. You get a little, little bit of space, a little bit of expansion. So Without that, we wouldn't have life on Earth. Scary. <laughs> so let's look at this. I want, I want to keep, I want to try to defend this as much as possible because, because just because, just because. Um, I'm watching a couple of different cooking shows. They basically have like, a reverse microwave, right? Like that little, the little pad where it just freezes stuff. Really? Yeah, 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 I don't know the name of it. Um, I've heard of one of those. So you see it in like a street, like a street vendor. They would, you know, they pour milk or whatnot, and it they comes get the, in pints. I want one. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> you, you, uh, you, they pour the milk and they get some fruit, and whatnot, and then it freezes it like really quickly so the form where they can like you know they spur it all out and they can like make like little ice cream shavings and whatnot it freezes it extremely fast um the name of it is you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna look it up right now i have my ipad in front of me i have we have technology once again going back to the person that decided um she had some kind of reverse microwave that's what I'm kind of thinking of. I think I might, that's the thing that came to my mind. I think I might have stolen that from uh, Adventures in Odyssey. I don't know if you or those good radio shows. Uh, main character, uh, Professor Whitaker, um, in one of the episodes, actually a really morbid episode, but 
that they found a dead body in a in a secret room in a, in in you know in the basement of the ice cream shop. It was good. It was good. I loved it when they have episodes like that where they do like a who done it type of deal. But um, in the beginning of the episode, uh, they walk walk in on him and he's working on a reverse reverse uh, microwave. Where basically, instead of heating things up really quickly, they cool things down really quickly. Um, and you know, all I'm thinking of is like you know this guy is this guy just sticks something into a little box and a bunch of um, liquid nitrogen just gets poured on it. <laughs> um, but the difficulty is that I don't know if it exactly be a it might be a coin microwave. Um, but uh, if if you find I, one, that would be an amazing I don't, thing. Oh, but, oh 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 wait 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 this is it this is it I found it I found it works. so. A frozen pan roller. Uh, that I don't even know. So you would put what you're making with in like in the top on the top of this little the, go back on this top part right here. Mm -hmm. And this is, is would really is cool it like really, really fast to the point where you can like you take these little spatula looking things and you like you pour milk or cream or something and then it freezes it so you can like scrape it off scrape it off and like tr make it into okay. ice cream okay. right like um but I, this doesn't even give me like the name of what it actually is yeah see so you, you got like little frozen treat things mm -hmm. like that okay um and it like and it looks really cool it looks really good but i don't know what it's called uh, i'll post a picture of what i found i'm gonna actually okay. save this to my thing good I'll, I'll post a picture of it i'm gonna add to my cart so that looks uh looks like it probably functions just uh to create a cold surface in much the way when um you've got a uh, air conditioner mm -hmm. um you use a compressor and a particular fluid that's it's flowing and some kind of way to transfer heat in order to, to quickly pull heat away from that surface mm -hmm. So I'm thinking it's probably just some really awesome coils um, and some kind of possibly compressor in there if it's electrical device mm -hmm. to do that. Um, heating things up is a whole lot easier than cooling things down because heat is just the motion of molecules. Yeah. And our, our the vibrating entropy is the idea that our uh, our universe tends toward the more chaotic, which means it's a thermodynamics mm -hmm. thing. Molecules are moving faster. So whenever you got molecules moving faster, nearer molecules are moving slower, the faster ones are going to speed up the slower ones, make them warmer, mm -hmm. and the faster ones are going to slow down because their energy is transferring. It's just like if uh, you know one car is moving slow and the other one's moving fast, the fast one is going to slow down and the slower one's going to either speed up or change direction, wh wh whatever mm -hmm. direction it's in. Yeah. So it changes the, the motion of both. Uh, microwaves actually work with um, the natural frequency of a water molecule. Um, if you've ever heard, seen a water molecule, an H2O, big old O and two H's kind of held off mm -hmm. like this, looks kind of like Mickey Mouse. Yes. Um, they're always vibrating, they're always moving like this. It's a natural frequency. It's kind of like when you have a tuning fork, it's a metal fork and you hit it and it plays a, a sound and vibrates back and forth. Um, it always plays that same sound when you hit it. Water always vibrates with the same frequency. So because it's a, a, a polar molecule, has a positive and negative side to it, when, uh, when, it, when it plays, it's actually vibrating in the microwave range. Mm -hmm. So just like if you sing to a, a glass and it vibrates and maybe shatters, it's another Mythbusters episode. Yeah. Um, you can also sing to a water molecule in the form of a microwave. And that's what makes the water move faster and faster and faster. Now it doesn't break, but when water molecules move faster, that means they're heating up. And so, water is in all food. Is there a way to like reverse that? Uh, like, so that would mean you're, you're somehow uh, pulling energy away from that water molecule. Cry, 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 mm -hmm. Cryonis? Cry, uh, cry, cry, cryonis. It's like, cryonis. It's like uh, I'll put cryonis. the actual spelling, but I think in my mind, it's, it's like CR. It's Cryonis. Cryonis? It's yeah, like C-R-Y-O. <laughs> S N I S something like that. Okay. Yeah. So are we? Are we? Um, so we, we have to. Th this thing has to draw heat out and form it into this perfect cube. Mm-hmm. Um, I I bet we could. Let's. I think a possibility would be to try to like 
freeze water on a spot mm -hmm. if you could do that somehow pull it pull the energy out but I, i'm thinking it would have to be attached with some kind of mass like it'd be more like a a taser mm -hmm. where you send it in and, and can quickly transfer that heat out yeah sort of like a, a heat sink if you guys put together your own computers um you're just drawing <sighs> heat out and so that's what this this thing would have to do mm -hmm. so 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 let's skip the whole you know, freezing to a perfect cube. Yeah. Is it possible to, you know, take something, point it at a puddle of water and it's like I think to do that, again, it's, it's, it's all matter. Like mm -hmm. in space, perfect vacuum, nothing like that could work because there, there's, there's no matter uh, connecting the two. Okay. Um, so it's a black hole. So it, it, has to, it has to involve like matter touching matter so yeah if you can transfer a cold beam if it's a beam it's actually moving through air or through water and so that would be a very difficult thing to do mm -hmm. in is it is it possible is it impossible is it kind of like in between impractical more like, impractical more? I, I don't think the application would be c can you make something freeze really really quick well yeah you, yeah you just have a device there but but to, to turn it into a, like weaponize it and I think that's why we don't see it because it's just so impractical to think of a way it would be, oh, we have to attach this system via a, a cord or something like that or mm -hmm. with, with some kind of fancy unit on the end that, that can draw that heat up really quickly. It, but then it would become part of the, the frozen thing. Yeah. So. But hey, if, it's, if, it, if you could just, if, it's, if it works and it's like... You need some more magic science. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we all can use some magic science in today's world, let's be honest. Well, that's everything that I had. There's hundreds and hundreds more of different technology in games. But if, we, if I pulled them all out of my hat and, uh, and talked about, we, we'd be here forever. Um, but those are the ones that came immediately to my mind when I thought of this topic. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, helping me out with this. I'm a little sad that most of them are, besides the ray gun. The ray, the ray gun's ray cool. Gun. Ray gun's cool. Ray gun's, ray totally, gun's possible. Little, totally possible. Everything else, eh. <laughs> eh. eh. Uh, well, thank you everyone for joining us here. Uh, if you liked what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, as always, I'm Rick Quasar. Chris. And Chris. Uh, and I hope you guys join me in whatever I have planned next for gaming. Need I say more? Have a good night. If you didn't get enough gaming, check out Shully's Got Game. I recommend. <laughs> Are you trying to upstage me right now? <laughs> I recommend Stanley Immortal Zombie Killer. I'll think about it. <laughs>